Okay, in this video, uh, I'm going to go through um, some of the, as many solutions I can on the copper nickel system. So we'll start with these set of questions here. And the scenario is that um, you've been tasked to make an alloy that has 40 weight percent nickel. It's a copper nickel alloy. And you need to make 500 grams. And the crucible is heated up to 1400 degrees C. And then we have a number of questions to answer about that. So let's go ahead and just notice that we have the copper nickel phase diagram here. And some of the things to notice on this phase diagram, like all phase diagrams, you have temperature on this axis. This is the Celsius uh, scale. And you have percent nickel on this axis with 100% co uh, copper or 0% nickel, 100% nickel or 0% copper. So this is what's called a binary phase or a binary alloy. And you can see that uh, there's a liquid phase, and there's a single solid phase here called alpha. What that means is copper and nickel are soluble in one another, and they form a single uh, solid solution that we are calling alpha. And this region, of course, in between the two is, is a mixture of the liquid and the alpha. So the first question is um, how much of each copper and nickel do we need to add to the crucible to get to the proper alloy composition? Well, what we want is we want uh, 40 weight percent nickel. We have 500 grams of the alloy, and the temperature is 1400 C. So let's go ahead and indicate that on the diagram here. Here's 1400 C. What we want is this uh, 40 weight percent nickel, percent nickel here, 40s here. So this is what we want as a uh, alloy composition is this line right here. So of course since you have 500 grams what you need is 40% uh, of 500 is going to equal uh, 200 grams of nickel and then the remaining 300 grams is going to be uh, copper of course. So that's the first question. And then next at this temperature 1400 what is the state of the alloy? So you can see that um, this composition, 40 weight percent nickel, when you at, at 1400C, these lines intersect in the liquid phase region. So the answer to that one would be it, that it is a liquid um, state. Then the next question, and I'm, I'm going to have to move the phase diagram here. Um, when the alloy is uh, cooled to room temperature, describe the likely microstructure. Well, uh, what we can see from this phase diagram is that um, down at uh, room temperature, this, this indicates that there's a single phase alpha. So we're likely to have a single phase alpha microstructure. And um, if any of you happen to know copper is one of those soft metals. It's FCC. Nickel also is FCC. So you're likely to have a face center cubic uh, multi a polycrystalline fa phase, um, one single solid solution. So one of the things we could say is we have a alpha, fa alpha um, polycrystalline Uh, single phase. Oops, I see I've written on that. I'll, I'll, I'll write again. Here we have um, alpha solid solution polycrystalline. Single phase. So the next question, this alloy has a higher yield strength than pure copper or pure nickel. Why? What is the strengthening mechanism? So the, the key here is um, kind of remembering that there are there's several different strengthening mechanisms. And um, because copper and nickel are um, soluble in one another entirely, the likely strengthening mechanisms that, you, that you're going to have is that uh, they are going to substitute for one another on the lattice. So you're, you have, of the strengthening mechanisms, um, let's just indicate the mechanisms here. Um, we have uh, work hardening, 
and that's basically um, applying elast elastic strain, increasing increasing the dis dislocation density. So we're, it's not through that. There's um, precipitation hardening, and precipitation hardening involves actually precipitating a uh, a second phase inside this matrix. And since we have a single phase, this alpha phase, it's not precipitation hardening, but not precipitation hardening, not work hardening. Is it grain boundary hardening? Well, um, probably not likely. Uh, we talked about that really being active when the grains are only on the order of uh, nanometers. And then um, you have uh, solution hardening. And this is indeed the kind that you have when you have an alloy that forms a solid solution um, like copper and nickel. Okay, so the next question is, um, in, the, in cooling the molten alloy from the liquid state, at what temperature does solidification start? At what temperature does solidification finish? So if you look at this phase diagram, what you'll see is that uh, whoop, you, at some point, get to the state where you're cooling and you enter the liquid plus alpha region that's indicated what it's white here before you get to the fully solid phase. And when that first particle forms, what you do to find its composition is you draw a line that is horizontal isothermal line because this and the endpoints of this line indicate the composition of the equilibrium phases at that temperature. So I could go all the way down here to read off something like 58 weight percent nickel as the composition of the first solid alpha to form at that temperature, and that temperature would be given by this horizontal line. It's approximately, I don't know, 1280 degrees C. And I'm going to make another video for question number six.